Hello. Today's gonna be kind of a bit of an experimental video, but I don't like to do experimental videos that are just experimental videos. I like to make tutorials out of them as well, so they're actually useful to people who are reviewing them. But I just wanted to give you a heads up before I start this tutorial that this is a um this this is kind of a test video as a result of a heads up uh, a pretty harsh heads up given to me by a, a user about the problems with st stereo audio and I, I have a previous video on that so I'm gonna play with um I'm gonna play with encoding this video in lots of different ways sort of try and improve the audio and, vi and video formats and just kind of save the source file and keep ring save the uncompressed file and then keep re-encoding it and re-encoding it and see what comes up best for you guys and then that's what I'll do do from now on so as I said I like to make these videos useful even though they are experiments so today what we're going to talk about is integrating jQuery in WordPress because I didn't actually know about this but WordPress has got loads of really really awesome jQuery integration because it uses it in the um, it uses it in the admin panel stuff you might have noticed in one of my um, previous videos that was recent at the time of this recording I actually slapped it up yesterday that um, I was using a um, I made a con a contact form and I integrated it into WordPress and I, I showed I, I showed that off to you guys and I used jQuery for some of the validation. Now as I was including that in a WordPress template I um obviously I needed jQuery because you need jQuery to use a jQuery plugin. So I was I was lo loading it from Google and that worked fine but when when I tried to load it from um WordPress like like I'm supposed to so there's not any double conflicting issues. Um something weird happened in it. Apparently it com conflicts with the JavaScript library called prototype the jQuery object selector complex with it. So thanks to the guys over digging into WordPress, um bloke called Jeff Star and um someone who I've talked about before, Chris Coyer, they're writing a book about WordPress and they Supporting site for it, but digging into WordPress.com had a tip, and it couldn't have come at a better time. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, talk about how to include jQuery properly into WordPress and kind of do it so that it's not in a conflict with any of the JavaScript libraries or JavaScript stuff that happens to be, um sitting in WordPress. There's also something where because WordPress is already included, you don't want to re include it because that that's just gonna um make your site less semantic because it's got it's got two includes to this certain library, so that's what's that doing for you? You'll be less organized because likely jQuery will be in your theme. So that's not a semantic. And when it's already in included, why would you want to have the user's bandwidth to load the same file twice? Um, and when you do jQuery plugins, they can get quite big bandwidth. And also, because uh, um, the core of um, jQuery, or the core of WordPress, makes use of quite a lot of jQuery plugins, you, if you want to utilize them, you can often just utilize them without having to worry about extra downloads or any of that stuff. Um, 
So, so I think we should dive in to look at some of this stuff. We're going to open up Coda, and there's a, there's all the place where I've written my custom JavaScript. You can notice some different things right away. After after the jQuery object selector, it's got it's got J in front of the dollar dollar sign. This is because the dollar sign on its own um, co can conflict with the prototype JavaScript library, which is also included in, in WordPress. So, what I've done to fix for that is, and thanks to the um, guys over at digging into WordPress, is you create a variable which you want to be in your object selector, and this is outside of any jQuery so I just put dollar sign J so that's our new object object selector and then the syntax for that is jQuery and what you basically do is put it in a no conflict mode um, you run the no conflict function and basically every time every time you use that object selector that dollar sign J Instead of just a doll sign, it won't. It, that makes sure it won't conflict with anything else that's in your happens to be in your um, website or is being used by WordPress that you can't necessarily control. But you have to put, remember to put this J or whatever you called your variable um, before before what you're gonna put has a CSS selector but after the dollar sign so, so that that was really instrumental in um, making sure that that uh, WordPress was in no conflict mode and and that's and that's probably the biggest and most important tip I've got for you in this video but the next part was just as soon as I heard that um, uh, WordPress had jQuery included, Drupal has jQuery included, and loads of CMSs have jQuery included. I think that's a j testament to just how easy and good and well it is to write. Um, so when I heard that that uh, jQuery was included. In, in WordPress, I was on fire, and I actually um, found out where to navigate to this on my own. If you learn, if you learn the WordPress folder structure, I think that's quite a big thing you can learn in WordPress about how to how to navigate and to know where stuff is without necessarily having to be in there before. Um, so I knew it would be in my WordPress installation, and then. Um, WP includes because it's an external thing that gets included, so that will be the logical place to get there. And then in the JavaScript folder, um, because I saw there was no jQuery, and then I looked in the jQuery folder, um, and to my delight, there was all these plugins all already included. So my biggest tip is is that if you if you need um if you need one of these plugins, especially jQuery UI or any of that tab stuff, because all the tab stuff is already included, and that can generally be a bit heavy weight, and you and you just don't want to mess with all those conflicts. So my tip is look if you're gonna see if you're gonna look to see if the plugin you want to use is in this is in this folder um, there, there's some cool stuff that WordPress is using like this interface dot js file um, but it's just a, a, a really solid place to look to start off with if if you need to include anything and there's that 
um, you know, to, to, uh, it has the J jQuery form plugin, which I was going to use, um, but then I didn't because the way I set up my form is you go check out the other video, I didn't end up doing Ajax submissions, but if I had done, I'd use the jQuery form plugin, and that's already included in WordPress, and, they, and there's just loads of stuff that's already included in WordPress when it comes to jQuery, so it makes it really kind of easy um, to do. The last thing I think we should take a butcher's at is um, how I inclu included these um, Uh, JavaScript file for we'll look at the c contact page which deals with that form and specifically the validation of that form and at the bottom we've got free script files so I just did I just did a normal script include I said I, I declared a type just like you would with any any other script include and then I did declared a source. This isn't anything web WordPress specific but remember make sure you're backing up to the roots and um getting your jQuery. Now I noticed that I um didn't put these plugins in the header dot PHP file nor did I put them in the footer dot PHP file. So they don't get included on every page. These plugins, because I only needed them for this specific purpose, only get included, and that file only gets included on the page template page dash contact, and they get included at the bottom of the page, so so that the page isn't dependent on these plugins in order for it to load. Um, kind of the last thing that I wanted to um, mention isn't isn't really WordPress um, specific again. It, it's just a bit more organisation related. This page template is in my theme because it has to do with the look of the page. But I didn't want my JavaScript to be in my theme. So no, I put all my, I put all my um, custom JavaScript in this JS folder at the root of my theme, and then in the script includes, I've used the dot dot slash um, method that is uh, consistent across file systems to back up to the root, go to the JS folder. And get the thing so that's that's just kind of an organization tool anywhere on a web page the dot dot slash method will generally back you up to the root um so that's kind of useful there um another cool cool thing to note is that and this is kind of specific to my server but I think it's worth mentioning the the actual root of my server isn't isn't where all my files are stored. My file and this is quite a common thing. My files are stored in the in, in the public HTML folder, but this contains a bunch of statistical and other stuff to do with permissions for my C file. But as as I only really have permissions to access the HTML folder and that's and that's the web root. All I all I that dot dot slash method generally backs up to the absolute root. I'm quite lucky that it backs up to the public HTML folder. So from there I don't have to say slash public HTML. I only have to go to the folder that I um, need to go to. So that's just a little um a little good thing there. 
So, thanks for watching this video, and I hope you got something out of it.